YouTube. Um, I just thought I'd share this this city with you. Um, this is my uh, my Hubson controller, uh, H501S, and I did the antenna mods to it. Um, the particular antenna mod I got, I don't know. I need to try other stuff really, I suppose, but it's always the expensive, isn't it? So, but anyway, it's um, it's had its antenna mods, and of course I did the did the battery mod as well. But then, because I had a bit of a rough time flying it, and sometimes when it flies, it just switches the video off. You know, you're recording, and then you've got no video because it must have switched itself off. Uh, there are a couple of few things that sort of uh, plague this, like it can switch into manual mode sometimes by itself, or at least it seems like it does, because, you know, if if you're flying low and you just clip the grass a little bit and then it shoots off up into the air um, it's almost like you're battling with a stick when it's in manual mode because it's you know in the center position so it it, 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 it raises itself anyway so um, so I figured to get around that because that's the switch for record and I thought well maybe when you're in a bit of a panic and you've got cricket to return to home mode and Look it out of that and stuff to try and get it to control again, into some sort of control. I thought maybe I'm hitting the switch, so the idea was to uh, take the switch off the board, the momentary switch, and just put some connections to it and put another momentary switch up here. So I could turn on and off the video from up here, so when I want the video on, but that's nice and out of the way, you see, so I'm not going to accidentally knock it off while I'm doing other stuff, which is what I thought had happened. But unfortunately, I I didn't use my heat gun. I used my soldering iron, and I managed to just damage the track on the board because I went into it a bit like a bull in a china shop. A bit stupid, really. But um, and so what I've done is damaged it. And what happens now is it's still floppy. guys friends give me a second I'm gonna connect the batteries so I've just connected I just connected one of the batteries out the back so like I say it still comes on and it still flies but I've got no feed now from the video so I just demonstrate that tripod so so if I just connect up the uh, the cords You get all the information come straight through up on the screen. Okay. I'll just I'm not gonna do the um, any of this. It's just for demonstration, so but what you don't get is you don't get any video feed. You can still take pictures. I can't switch the video on and off like I said because I've damaged the tracking on the um, switch. But I can still take pictures but I can't see what I'm taking. Um, so basically what I've done to test that is just sent it up into the air. I mean I could have done it from here really, couldn't I just press the throttle button and have a look at the uh, what's recorded, but you know, it's because I was flying it. Um, when I thought about it I sent it up into the air, took a few snapshots, doing like a, a 360 panoramic view. And they all turned out so, you know, no, it, it, it's not that it doesn't work anymore, it does work and it still flies, it still does everything it's supposed to do. But it doesn't do the video. And you don't get CFPV, um, which really it makes it for me quite difficult flying because line of sight, this thing can shoot off quite quick, quite far. And if you don't know where it is, if you can't see it, it's a bit of a bit of a nightmare. But you use big FPV, of course, and you know your sort of surroundings. You uh, you get to relocate it really quickly. And fly it, so that's what I'm going to do today. I've got to fix this. So, what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to take this board out um, and replace it for another one. Now, you can't buy these boards, you can buy a replacement handset for £76 from Bangor, could be slightly variable on the price now. But in order to get a board, 
which I have. You have to talk directly with Hobson. And they will send it out to you. Now this cost me, this has not got the FPV receiver. You see on the corner there? I've got to take one off my board and put it on there. Doesn't look too difficult. But this is the switch. I damaged the track too. You probably see that that's all pretty fine. I don't know if you actually can. You see how clumsy I am sometimes. Just try and hold that underneath the light of it, but I don't know if you can see how fine that is. Uh, hey there, YouTube. Okay, so we've got a mission on with this then. So I got the word back from Hubson regarding these two boards and the reason why there's a difference on the boards is because the, this one, the new one, is an updated version of this one. So this has been modified. They obviously had some modifications to make, some upgrades, and they made a new board. And so this is what I'm going to be fitting into my transmitter case after I take off the battery connections and I've also got to take off the FPV receiving module which is here you desolder these, desolder here pop it there some flux on these, solder it down nice and I can count that up, this one's still here which is for the um, control part of the uh, transmitter but it's amazing why they've moved these well it's not amazing why they've moved them but I just wonder why they did move them well, they've moved that from where the battery connections are moved it to the side here and also this connection is over here now rather than here it's a whole Oh no, that bombing that is a different configuration to this. Huh. So, I need to get this done. But the first things first, I cannot do this while this is like this. So we have to do a little bit of a magic show and I didn't tidy get that off. That much tidied up. To be fair, but I made a bit of a space to work in. I've just been um, just taking off the majority of solder from these pads, and I'm just going to put a bit of flux on it now and uh, a wick, and let's carry on. Okay, so I use me solder, solder iron, and use some wick um, to get this off. And as you can see. This is off now, and that's all I've got to take off this old board and put onto the new one. Oh, oh apart from the, the power cables as well, of course. Um, but everything else can just stay on there. Now, there's nothing wrong with this board. It works great as a, um, you know, just for flights, but it's no good for the FPV. Like I said, I damaged the switch, and I'm going to keep hold of this load because. There may be a time that I may be able to repair the switch, uh, or at least the pad, the um, connections, but it, it won't be yet, and it may never happen, but you never know. So that can be discarded. And then this one. Just need to have this fitted. All soldered. Well, I've put some flux on the pads. Now I can just solder them into place. So I'll come back when I've done that. A little a bit of snot is on there. But. So there we go. That's all soldered in. Not too difficult more of a pain to actually take it off the other one but so 
put the power leads on. So all we're going to do now is fit it. Fit it, put the ribbon cable back in. Connect these up, connect the antennas up. Put a battery on it and give it a test. Fingers crossed, eh? Okie dokie, so, right, well I've put all this back together, let's get our lights out of the way if we can. Um, I'm going to take the internal area we'll get out again now, because it was just while I was checking it. So let's keep putting the externals in the, on there. So I'm going to go for it, just get the pair of tweezers. Oh, nothing's plugged in, so don't think that any. Uh, that would cause any any damage. Get this little internal area. Get rid of that. Put this on. Um, uh, what I'm going to do now is, all this is on, I'm going to fit the batteries and put the case on. And I'm going to switch it over and I'm going to show you that we have a new function. Well, we have a new um, feature, let's say. Uh, within this new board and this is the upgrade board this is the, the latest version board that you can get for one of these transmitters gotta get that screw out of there it looks like a screw that we really shouldn't be down there or oh, looking at it again it's actually part of the um, it's what actually keeps it in I can see through now okay so let me put this together and we'll have a look here put the batteries in I'll put the back on um, just turn this baby on and it looks normal you know, like it would normally look we don't have anything to do with the uh, the quad on here because the quad's not switched on now I've, I've, I've bound this already um, because of course you've got to bind the transmitter back to the, the, the quad again so I know I've already done that um, so I can just go ahead and just show you if I can do this one-handed, it's not really that easy. Let's see if we can do it. Okay. And now we're going to get the rest of the information. So we've got a starts up slightly different uh, with that green background. I'm just going to go ahead and do this compass calibration. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've calibrated the compass in, and as you can see, the camera works, that's not a problem. Looks quite nice. A little shake. Yep. Looks quite nice, nice and responsive. Now I noticed um, that there's another function with this. I'll just get rid of these little sort of things. There's another function, so if I pull that down. So we can do this one handed. Mm, no, we don't want to follow me on, do we? Just get rid of that. No, let's get rid of that. It's supposed to say off. That says put throttle low. Okay, okay. Oh, that's not bad. A little bit of feedback there. Um. Full batteries. Me. Well, what you got to do basically is just put it into the normal. You know, when you uh, hold this down and get your menu up. Now, I don't know if you can see that. That's better. Let me just switch off the flashing lights. Ah, oh, okay. So it's not going to do that while that's in there. Just make sure that it goes off. Now, let me just go down here to exit that a minute. Okay, so we can keep those LEDs on, or we can press that button again, and we can turn those LEDs off. Now, let's go back again and pull this down, press that in. Oh, pull it. Yeah, no, pull that down. Okay, so let's turn that down. So we got the normal, we got the uh, set reverse, 
sensitivity, frequency, set manual, and you've got to fly with no GPS. So that was a that's a new a new feature. And of course we've got the version on here, and mine's now on uh, version 2.14. You can see that my quad stone version. Um, well, it says version 1.2.3, then it says, uh, you know, version 1.117 is what I put in there. Huh. I'm not quite sure about all that. But yeah, so far with no GPS. So you don't have to have it. Oh. You see, manual mode is still there. Fly with no GPS. So you can say yes to that. Which will probably come in quite handy. Because even though the GPS feature is good, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Mm, it's constantly trying to feedback on your flying. So let's say you're doing like a figure of eight and you're doing it pretty quick, you can't just use what you consider to be like the normal flow of the quadcopter. If you're throwing it into a corner, you're going to expect it to drift out of that corner as you're flying it until you start turning it in and powering it in. But when you've got the GPS on it, see, it tries to take that away from you, so you start. It's almost like you're trying to swim with your, with your clothes on. You know, you can still do it, but you're being held back a little bit. So that could come quite handy, especially if you can use that without having to use the, uh, the, the the manual feature setting it into manual but I don't know what I'm jibbering on about so I just thought I'd show you that fly with no GPS there's a new feature on the board I don't think I'm going to share it anyway who cares